Hey everybody. So today I'm going to talk about one of the fun pet species, Blatta orientalis. Now, I had been in pest control for five years. Um, I had found one of these alive. It was a female. She was creating Uthika and these folks up here, the American cockroach, um, I had them on display at a event with my female Orientalis and they decided to eat her. So that was the only one I'd ever gotten from actually working in pest control. Uh, for some reason they're a little dif difficult to find in this area so uh, I had to actually end up buying this colony. Um, you can see I have them housed in here. Quite a number of adults. Orientalists do like crowding. Uh, they enjoy being around each other. So it's quite alright to have them in a little container like this. Now this is a gasket seal. has uh, just one of these little kind of deals going on. Got some holes in it. What is this called? It is a lock and lock. I have no idea what brand this is. But it works. It has uh, four latches on the side. Opens on up and keeps all the moisture in because these are uh, typically you'll find them in boiler rooms and damp basements and stuff like that and sewer lines. They uh, really like high humidity, high moisture, and high heat. Uh, that you can keep them very similar to the American cockroaches. Um, something around mid 80s is perfect for them uh you can keep them a little bit warmer than that in the low 90s but i say the mid 80s because they do breed pretty quickly once they hit adulthood if you can see right here there is an Ithika laying right down there it's very kind of hard to get my camera to focus through here but females were producing almost immediately as i got them as soon as the temperature raised up a little bit from uh, shipping, they started producing. So you can see the uh, the males have these longer pseudo wings. They can't really fly with them. I see a male right there, and they have these kind of useless wing nubs. Uh, can't fly. Can't glide. Can't do anything like that. And let me see if I can find a female. Somewhere in here. I've got a bunch of them. Just gotta. Alright, you guys get off of here a second. Don't worry about you running out on me. Make sure they had no little stowaways. Nope. Okay, sit that back down. And I believe that is a female there, so let me see if I can get her. Sorry for the poor camera work again. Well, we'll just do it this way. You can see a female right. Actually, these are all. Another female there. So they have these, like, wing pads. Kind of like a uh, parka blotta, like a wood cockroach has. Um, or a uh, female uh, lateralis. Uh, they obviously can't fly. Um... Orientals can uh, climb plastic surfaces, so I'm using a, uh, right now I'm just using a Vaseline barrier, cocoa fiber substrate with cork bark, uh, kind of give them something to climb on, hide under. The uh, oak leaves in there give them a little bit of things to munch on in between eating food. Um, what's really neat about these guys is how territorial they are with their food. Uh, they'll pick it up and kind of run around with it in their mouths, which is pretty neat. I'm actually going to... Grab a little bit here and see if I can film that behavior. This is a just a mixture of um, essentially a, it's a parakeet food. So I'm just going to dump a little in the corner here. Let's see if that piques their interest. Let's see that one there grabbing. And immediately they come and start checking it out. I'm 
Now, I've been feeding these guys uh, every other day, roughly. About that much food, just a pinch. Um, there's maybe three or four dozen in here, something like that. And they've been doing really well uh, just on this stuff. Um, like I said, it's like a parakeet meal or something like that. Uh, not much cocoa fiber substrate in here. You can see it's maybe inch and a half, two inches. And that's just to maintain moisture. They don't need it. They don't dig at all. Um, they, like I said, they can climb the plastic, so you can see there's a little bit of a Vaseline barrier there. It's only about an inch wide, um, just to keep the adults from running up. The juveniles are going to be a little harder to control. Um, that's why I got some of this stuff. It's a Fluon, which is basically it's a insecta slip. It's a liquid Teflon dilution, and I use that currently for my ants. I have a uh, colony of Camponotus nirticus up here, which is a small species of wood boring ant. Their little tiny outworld there. You can see the mess of critters I got in the laundry room here. I got my camera to focus. There we go. So. Some of the labels are facing out, some of them aren't. Uh, most on the top shelf is tarantulas, spiders, and those kind of things. I have some dolomates. I have some latrodectus. Uh, I have a hogna in the corner. Uh, a couple of random things. The random wild cult and superworms. That's a fun bin of weird junk that I find around my house and superworms that I feed my tarantulas to with rather uh, some other things I have some really just a bunch of stuff around here uh, these are actually wild cult paraplanina americana uh, and these have been uh, in this container now for about a week and a half um, they're going into basically quarantine until I get the uh, until I make sure that they're pesticide free and then I'll introduce them with the rest of my colony. Uh, the, the colors are about the same, so I'm not really concerned about a color morph shift or anything like that. You see down here, the, uh, roaches are definitely active, pulling the food apart and eating it. Like I said, these guys absolutely love this stuff and they'll, they'll grab it and just run around the container with it, which is kind of funny to watch. But, again, I uh, keep the temperatures of mid-80s, um, pretty humid. Um, I would say at least 60 to 70%, uh, but they would prefer more, uh, more like 80 to 90% humidity. Um, it's a little hard for me to do that in here, so they're a little bit in the lower end. But it's they're still breeding fine. Their Rathika still hatch out okay. Um, you can see them chasing each other. Run around the food. That's one of my favorite behaviors of these guys. They're quickly becoming one of my favorite uh, pair of domestics. Uh, the Americanas are still my favorite, but these are uh, these are pretty active and they all have these weird little personalities, which is kind of fun. Uh, so Blada orientalis. Uh, most people consider them a pretty bad pest, but uh, as you can see, there's no real concern with them getting out with that Vaseline barrier, gasket sealed container for any of the really really tiny first instar nymphs a little bit of a fight there for some food uh, they're voracious they will eat and eat and eat they like the oak leaves so they've been getting those uh, they don't eat them a lot but they do eat them and other than that it's just they've been really just fun to watch uh, don't have a lot to really say about them otherwise I haven't had them for all that long um, seeing them in the pest control field it was uh, their ideal conditions were damp, warm basements, um, usually in boiler rooms and stuff like that. Uh, they usually got forced out by American roaches because Americans are a little more of a bully compared to these guys. But uh, they're definitely a fun, medium-sized cockroach to have. If you don't mind, something that is able to climb, cannot fly, but it can climb. And they will uh, have the potential to infest a home. So it is one thing you have to be mindful of, uh, unless you have a really dry house. Uh, if you're out west or something like that, probably a little bit easier to keep these. 
up north here in Pennsylvania, it's not really too much of a concern in a regular house. Uh, but if I was in the city, uh, it'd be a little bit more of an issue just because of the uh, the sewer lines coming into the home and stuff like that. Uh, they're not hard to get rid of at all if they ever do get out. Boric acid works fantastic with these. Um, it's one of the easiest ways to get rid of them. But again, I don't plan on any of them getting out. And I do plan on keeping them as pets because they are good breeders and they're just a really fun species to have. So, Plato Orientalis. If you guys have any questions, give me a shout. Uh, you know, like, share, comment, all that good stuff. And I'll see you around.